This is the real Tom Rose, and in this problem we're dealing with the famous invented function. It says, let hash sign be defined by. And these problems are a great source of error for many of my students. And one of the ways to handle it is to simply remember that they're inventing a function. You don't, you're not supposed to have any prior knowledge of what's going on. All that you need to solve the problem is inside the problem. So this really boils down to simply following directions. Now, the first thing that they tell you, and this is a little strange, is they tell you that m hash n is equal to m squared plus n squared minus 3. But then they actually ask you about p hash q, which simply requires that we take everywhere that we have an m and we put a p in it for it, and everywhere that there's an n and we put a q in for it. So you have to do this odd translation right at the beginning. Uh, but let's do that. So m becomes p, n becomes q. OK, we've got our new equation. Um, now there is a hidden constraint in this problem. So they've asked us, which of the following cannot be the value of p plus, of, sorry, p hash q? Now the value of p hash q can be many, many things. There's an infinite list of things that it could be. So at first it appears that this is an impossible task, because surely, surely we can make p hash q equal any of those numbers. But there's a hidden constraint. The hidden constraint is that p and q are positive integers. This severely restricts what we can and cannot do with the value of p hash q. Now at this point, there's not, not really any great way of figuring out which one of these is impossible other than simply trying out values and seeing if we can generate four of the, of the others. So this is really going to be a process of elimination question. And I'm noticing that the answer choices are all quite small. So I'm going to try to create the smallest numbers that I possibly can for p hash q. And let's build a table. I'm going to try uh, the smallest numbers I can use are 1 and 1 for p and q. And let's go ahead and plug those in. If I plug in 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 3, that's going to be equal to negative 1. And we just found out that A is not the answer. So let's try plugging in 1 for p and 2 for q. We'll get 1 squared plus 2 squared minus 3 equals 5 minus 3 is 2. So 2 is not the answer. All right, we're doing pretty good. And we can see, since we're eliminating some of these, that we're on the right track. So we are finding numbers in the right range. Let's try plugging in a couple more. Let's try plugging in 2 and 1. 2 squared plus 1 squared minus 3 equals 2 again. OK, that doesn't help so much. Let's try 2 and 2. 2 squared plus 2 squared minus 3 equals 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 3 is 5. All right, and I can already kind of tell that we're not going to get 3 because these are the smallest numbers I could come up with, and we're already, notice that they're increasing, and we're already past 3. But since we're so close, I'm going to do one more step, and I'm going to try to create 7. It's probably 3 and 1. Let's try that. 3 squared plus 1 squared minus 3. 9 plus 1 is 10, minus 3 is 7. So we just created 7. And there's no magic to the numbers that I'm picking. I'm simply picking the combinations of the smallest integers that I can. And we end up with 3 is the only one we were not able to generate.